Russ. This is Sailing Vessel Tow Tug. Our current location is West End, which is a small settlement town at the west end, of course, of uh, Grand Bahama Island in the Bahamas. And um, current status is tied to a dock, so glory be, I've been actually sleeping well and, and relaxing the last few days and kind of just giving myself some R&R. &R. Um, and let me show you real quick what we've been up to. Uh, it's, this this going to be a short video because it's going to take a long time to upload if I make a video long. So we're going to talk only about the trip from where I was to where I am and a real quick blurb about what we're going to go next. So hang on a second. Okay, so looking at that, the chart, there's the Florida, USA, and here's the Bahamas down in here. Um, and I do uh, and apologize, I have a hodgepodge of paper charts now that I'm using, and it's actually going to work out just fine. But um, this is a spot in which I entered the Bahamas, and I came in here, and this is where I saw the ghost ship. And I went over to uh, this island here, which was Grand Key, and I've learned to pronounce it Key, not K. And then I left. I was worried about the northern wind blowing coming in and I was worried about it being mostly from the east and I didn't want to be there for that so I wanted to be down here in West End. So the, the, in this episode the next few blurbs uh, are going to be about uh, me getting from here to here. Sailed about half of it and then had a motor the rest and then in the wee hours I motored south outside the reef to get here. So a closer look. Um, this is Grand Bahama Island. My next target is going to be following this line, if possible, if I get the winds for it. And I'm currently right here, right here at West End. And you can see this is where the Little Bahama Bank is. The Little Bahama Bank is a period of shallow water, is, a, is an area of shallow... The Little Bahama Bank is an area of shallow water encircled by a reef. It's a lot like Florida Bay and the Florida Keys. And um, so you have this chain of islands, a lot like the Florida Keys, but the islands don't really continue here. Most of this is shoal water below the waterline, except for this spot. Um, Memory Rock and there's a couple of other keys uh, uh, just north of West End. So my current location is right here. That's Grand K behind me. Grand K and Little Grand K. The uh, cell tower is Little Grand. But they're in my rear view mirror off to the starboard side of rocks. So on the chart, when it looks like this on the chart, and you think, yeah, but they're probably underwater, it'll probably be fine. Well, don't be so sure. I see three rocks protruding above the surface. I'm sure I saw a fourth at one point. At least I saw where water was breaking. So pay attention to the chart. That's the key one. They say there's rocks, there's friggin' rocks. And at low, at, this is low tide, but at high tide, yet the other day when I came in, you couldn't see them at all. And that's what's scary. I mean, they might have been just, you know, five inches below the water line. Yeah. Well, I really don't want to get rained on, but that is a pretty cool formation of clouds. Looks like some pretty heavy showers over there, but it, it appears to be moving to my right and is going to pass out of my path, I believe. And I'm actually grateful right now because it's blocking the sun, which was in my eyes and really cooking me. So. When the sun is low in the sky, it's hard. When the sun is low in the sky, it's hard to get protection because it just comes in sideways under the canopy. So, anyway, I think that is just freaking beautiful. Nature's work, just beautiful. So that's what happened to the rainstorm. It kind of just fizzled, and I think it moved west. I think it's going the same direction we are, just a lot faster and bigger. Beautiful. And look, my moon is here, so that's a key part of my planning, because once it gets dark, I have a moon to guide me, so... Yeah, so I want to... So I want to stop in about three miles uh, toward the sun. I'm going southwest. I'm steering 240 right now. I want to go to a certain spot that I, I pre-identified, just on this side of the reef. So. I'm stopping nice, clear, sandy water about 10 feet deep, and I'm gonna drop the anchor, put on the light. I'm gonna go have some dinner. I'm gonna probably take a nap, and then when I wake up from my nap, I'm gonna do the engine PMs, like check the oil and all that stuff, and um, and review my navigation instructions for cutting through the reef here, because we're going through a place that they call Memory Rock, 
it's supposed to have a light which I already don't see so maybe it's just out of my view but you know I just want to double check make sure my, my chart plotters both of them are in agreement make sure my GPS fix is in agreement before I just blast through this thing at night I've got to get to the helm because I'm out of I'm off course oh my gosh cats and dogs living together yeah so um uh, yeah my objective is to make it if not to the west end marina called old bahama bay uh, marina if not make it to their dock tonight in the middle of the night make it to the anchorage immediately outside i'm i'm not worried about anchoring outside there tonight because there is no wind at all and there's not supposed to be any wind tonight and if we do get any wind it'll be out of the northeast which will push me away from shore and not into shore so i'm willing to do that but if i feel squirrely um, then i'm gonna go right into the marina and tie up to the government dock because i'm still in quarantine and i need to um, clear in with customs so i i have the yellow flag flying so the first order of business for me will be quarantine well that is clearing in customs and taking down the yellow flag then getting my marina slip and then finally relaxing you know <laughs> but uh, um, uh yeah Whew, December 2 now I'm anchored at West End West End is the West End obviously of the Grand Bahama Island and that's kind of what it looks like here Lots of riprap on the seawall, and that's what's making all that noise. When I pulled in, I thought that big house was a big ship. I mean, it was just so hazy and dark. I mean, there's very little light, and the, the moon had set. I do see some kind of beach over here, um, and I see a, a uh, breakwater back there, or a jetty maybe with lights on. So probably people go out there for sunsets and stuff, and a couple boats at anchor. The question is, what I couldn't figure out when I came in, I mean, I, I recognized that there were three other boats at anchor, but I, what I couldn't figure out is why they all anchored in such deep water. Unless I'm the only idiot who came in close, because I'm rolling around. I mean, you can see me bouncing. Maybe they, they don't look like they're moving at all. So hell, I guess that's what you get. But it's deep. It's like 30 feet out there, 30 feet deep. Hell, that's a lot. I don't have that much chain. <laughs> so, anyway, let's go on in. Um, I'm kind of, I always get nervous going someplace new, you know, um, so I, and I've never been here before. Anchoring is not that big a deal, but I'm going to be going out a little bit and coming in through those two big concrete breakwaters and into the marina. I hope it's all pretty self explanatory. I have to go with the, what they call the government dock or the customs dock first because I have not checked into the country yet and I need to do that. Then I go see the dock master and book a marina for a few days and I, I see one sailboat, two sailboat masts in there so I'm sure there's plenty of empty spots but uh, and she told me yesterday they had lots of empty spots so we'll see how it is and it should, it'll be fine for a few days. I just need to, I need to be able to sleep at night for a few days or it's really going to be bad for my health. A person could continue another 30, 20, 30 miles, I think, along the uh, the southwestern coast, you know, to the east, and go to Freeport or Lukaya. There's a lot of marinas there too. You know, and they uh, arguably they could be nicer. Some are attached to resorts and stuff like that, so they might be pretty nice. But the prospect of going one more inch without getting a decent night's rest was just like, I gotta stop. I gotta stop. So. Anyway, I really haven't had a decent night's sleep since I left Fort Pierce, since the night before I left Fort Pierce. So, I haven't slept yet. And if you notice how calm it was when I was out there at anchor, which was just a few hours before this and now the wind was really cooking so it was so windy that it was very difficult to get the boat off of the government dock and I stayed there for two days kind of pressed up against the dock and that was not too good so again I didn't sleep so hot 
only when I moved to my final uh, dock did I get some good rest. That's the entrance over there to this harbor. It's got a nice little turning base in here. If you took the left channel beyond that little peninsula, that's when you go down to like residential canals, which are almost all vacant. Kind of weird. Like a town that never started, but there's Tom Tog back there. There's Tau Tog sitting here mashed up against the seawall. Haven't figured that out yet. If the wind never dies down, I guess I can never leave. But the marina is almost empty. So the under the heading of well, what's next? The what's next is uh, get to leave West End, proceed southeasterly, and make this heading if possible, and get into uh, the area behind Great Stirrup K. But I would actually pass to the west of it, try to make that channel, and get into Great Harbor. I just that's mostly out of curiosity. I'm not in a hurry to get to Nassau. But I thought this looks like supposedly one of the nicest harbors in all of the Bahamas, and I can see why people think that. So my plan is to go in here and anchor for a few days and just chill out. And you know, there's a cell signal there supposedly, so uh, if I have that, then I'll be checking the weather. And when I see a nice window, I'll get out of there. And then I'm going to run south and west around these shoals, and, and then around these shoals as well. You have to go all the way out, and then go into Chub Key. And Chubb is down here, and you can anchor in Chubb. You can anchor up at Whale Key, which is here. There's a couple spots you can anchor. And you do that to prep for a jump down to Nassau. Conversely, what I could do is go from Great Harbor and go retrace my steps and go back out and go around the north side and travel the open ocean side and have a, possibly a better sailing solution depending on the winds to go directly into Nassau. <clears throat> yeah, so um, big picture is that I, I've already booked a marina in Nassau for uh, starting December 20, and I'll, I want to be in the area at anchor for a couple days before that. To be sure, I'll make it, because if you don't show, then you lose the slip, and then you don't have a marina at all. So you certainly don't want to you know, be a belt tapper and arrive at the last second. And if you do, you do, and then I guess we'll just muddle through you know, and, and make the best of it, if that. So, so that's the plan. Um, I'm planning to leave tomorrow to make the first step down to um, 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 Great Harbor. And I should be able to upload this video then. And then we'll, we'll head on down to either Chub K on the, on the bank side where the water is shallow and more gentle, or I'll go around. And but either way, we need to get next to um, Nassau. That's the goal. If I have northerly winds, I know what I'll do. If I have easterly winds, I really don't have much of a solution. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, um, I really haven't hit my stride with making videos uh, when I'm constantly on the move and I am always struggling for, um, you know, cell reception and Wi Fi and that kind of stuff because it's not a sure thing that you're going to have Wi Fi in any location that you're at. So, uh, this is going to be a bit of a learning curve. And if any of you watch um, How to Sail Oceans with Kevin Boothby, You'll know that you know, some of his videos lag by several weeks because the dude's on the move and when he finally gets, and he can make a bunch of videos, but you can't upload them necessarily depending where you're at. So, so I'm still kind of getting into the hang of that. But, uh, but I do appreciate people watching and I do appreciate your comments that I get. So um, I, you know, I, right now I'm sitting here appreciating a quiet marina that I can sleep well in and I appreciate my good health and freedom to live this way. So everybody out there, take care, enjoy the weather, enjoy yourselves, and be grateful to be alive. Take care. Bye-bye. is a giant pile of conch shells. That's a conch shell. Good place to get conch fritters and conch salad, which I've already had. A lot of stuff.